Welcome to Flight Test. I'm Peter, and today I'm going to walk you guys through building the FT Vector. Now, this plane uses the Power Pack F on our store. It's basically a 2204 motor and some 3.7 gram servos for those of you guys that want to find your own components. It's just a strong intermediate flyer and such. It's roughly a good like second to third airplane or so. It's pretty pretty snappy and stuff, but you'll guys find it's really easy to build. And if you do crash it, the noses are changeable and you can switch them out. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're gonna do is uh, lay out all your parts and you're gonna cut them out and punch out all the little pieces. So let's go ahead and do that first. Okay, so once you're done punching out all the pieces, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build the nose. You're gonna need this piece here and these two side plates. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the paper that we're gonna pull off. I'll show you which ones we're gonna remove, but we're gonna start off with these guys right here. Then here. and this last one right here. So it's a total of five pieces, one, two, three, four, five. And now the next thing to do is we're gonna open up our score cuts. And if you guys uh, wanna try this without a knife, we also have a build video on doing it with uh, nothing but uh, credit cards and other stuff. This makes it a lot easier to do this if you guys press too far with the knife. Cause the thing with the knife is what we're doing is we're just opening up this cavity. We're not cutting the paper. You wanna be very careful not to cut too deep that you hit the paper. Gonna pull these pieces out. So once you got the paper off, it's time to install our little uh, nose reinforcement side plates. To do this, you, you can either use either or, they're both the same, left or right. But what we're gonna do is remove the paper on one side. So for the right side, I'm gonna hold it like this and pull this side of the paper off. And just kinda gently fold this up just a little bit. Uh, the reason why we do this is when you pull the paper off, it kinda curls in a lot easier. So if you leave the paper on, it, it kind of crinkles and stuff and it's a lot harder to work with. So I'm just gonna gently curl this up and curl this up too. Put a little bit of glue on the inside here. <clears throat> Line up with the kind of cut marks you can kind of see right there. Press it down and fold up to the nose. You, you should kind of see it, it holds the same kind of like radius around the whole piece. Let that cool and dry and do the same thing for the other side. Okay, once this is cooled, it's time to move on to our B fold. And if you guys aren't familiar with the B fold, B is for beside, you can see right here. You can kind of see like what's going on right here with the diagram. You see that side plate right there and that side plate and this bottom plate right here. You guys can imagine it's looking from directly from behind here. So it's, it folds up like that. This isn't correct, this is an A fold, which is above. You can see how this, this plate goes above. That's wrong for this step of the build. You want to do the B fold, which is down here. All right, so we'll get started. First thing I want you to do is I like to glue from here to here, and don't go any further than this line right there. I'll put some glue there. I just like to do one side at a time to make it a little bit easier. Fold it up, get something about 90 degrees, hold it there and let it dry. Once it's cooled down, you can do the same thing for the other side. Now the next thing I like to do is we're gonna start with the bottom of this fold right here. And to do that, we fold this down. Oh, it opens up that cavity, which makes it this a lot easier to glue. And we're gonna glue from here to up to this nose. Do not go further than this right now, because this is a lot to do in one step. You guys can if you want, but I highly recommend just gluing to here and here for now. And you wanna do both of these at the same time. Fold it over. And you kind of pull on the top of the nose and just kind of like roll it in there too as well. This kind of just holds and establishes this curve and this angle. Once you're done with that, we can open this back up. Also, before we get too much further, I forgot to remove the paper in here, but we can go and do that now while we still have access to it. So just go and lift this piece of paper right here and pull it off. That just kind of helps us curl up right here. This is the duct for the cooling, so you can get some air to your systems inside. Now continue on with the nose. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put some glue here. And some glue there. Fold that down. It also helps too if you kind of like push your hand here and kind of like spread, these, spread this open a little bit. It'll help you get that piece around in there. There you go, just like that. 
once that's cool, you can kind of fold this down and put some glue here and there. Also, before we go any further too, we need to open this up and we need to bevel this cut or sand it. If you guys are unfamiliar with this, we just take this knife and we very carefully kind of just shave off a little bit of the foam on one side. If you guys are a, uh, not very comfortable using the knife, the sanding block works just as fine. Put some glue here, put some glue there. Fold that down. And wait for it to cool down. Last thing is the top part of the canopy. Uh, the reason why I move this paper too, Yan, is so it can easily curl. So since the paper is gone, I'm just gonna hand curl this down a little bit so it matches this curve right here. Just gonna pre-check it. Feels pretty good. Put some glue there. And some glue there. Fold this down. And you guys are all done. And that's the nose piece. So now we're gonna build the fuselage subassembly. This basically is where you're gonna install your power pod and most of your electronics will reside in here. So let's go ahead and get started. For this step, we're gonna need the fuselage, this main assembly piece, side reinforcement plates, and the canard thing. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing like we do on all of our builds, which is to open up these score cuts. So I'm gonna do it with this knife. You guys can use the credit card, as mentioned before. Okay, once that's done, we're gonna go knock out all the pieces on the inside. Just gonna punch them out. Also punch out these guys too. Okay, once you're done with that, it's actually time to glue these pieces in first. So to do this, we're gonna go and take this and look right here where it's gonna go. You basically have a left and a right half. It's gonna go in this intersection like this. And for alignment, you're gonna actually wanna look inside this hole. You kinda of see there's a square here. It's the exact same diameter and shape as this square in, in this area. So I'm just gonna line it up here so I get a good eyeball on what I'm looking for. It looks about like that. So I'm gonna take this and roll this over. Put some glue in here. And then glue this section in. I just take I just take my time of making very sure that this piece is very lined up with this hole. If you guys are unsure too, or if you need a little bit of help, it doesn't hurt to stick the canard in there too. So make sure that make sure that everything is real nice and straight. All right, once that's dry, go and repeat the process for the other side. And once you're done, you just get something that looks like this. You can kind of see how this goes, like this will act as a step when you form this piece over. It kind of keeps everything nice and square or more and more reinforced too. So the next thing to do is we're gonna go and do our B-fold. And like I mentioned before, it's beside. You can see the diagram there. That means it folds like this, folds down like that. I'm going to go and check, just to make sure it fits real nice. Then we get my glue gun, put some glue in the crack. I'm gonna get something that's a uh, perfect square and just make sure everything's right. Go and do the same thing for the other side. Now the next thing you do is to trial fit this piece. Note, trial fit, do not glue yet. We're gonna install electronics a little bit later on but I'm just gonna roll this in just to make sure everything's real nice and square and it looks pretty good. And that looks like that. So it's all pretty boxy looking. Next thing you do is stick the canard in. To help with this uh, process, I like to kind of pinch one end down a little bit. It just kind of keeps the paper from like catching and then folding under and then getting pulled off. So just pinch it in a little bit and slide it right on. To help with the process, you can kind of wiggle it around a little bit too. Go ahead and close this to make sure everything's square once again. Once you're satisfied with the alignment, you can just kind of flip it over and put a little bit of glue on the ends of the canard. And 
that's pretty much how you build this piece. Commence the docking sequence. For the next step, we're gonna go ahead and assemble our wing and get it ready for the fuselage and other components. For those of you building this out of plans, you're probably going to see this kind of weird line right here. You don't need to cut this out. This is only for kitting, so this can fit in a box real nice and smooth. But for those of you that you know are doing plans, this is not necessary, so go ahead and disregard this and move on to the next step. But for those of you who bought the kit, we're gonna need to do something about this. So I'm gonna take some glue, put it in here, and fold this over. Press it down the table where it's nice and flat. Take a piece of scrap foam and smear off the excess glue. Now it doesn't hurt too, once this glue is dried and cool, to put another piece of tape over top and just kind of press it down. And this is also a good chance for those of you that are going to make this jet go really fast and put bigger motors and whatnot and make it really heavy, to put some carbon fiber in here or any other strength strengthening materials. I would recommend putting it about here by digging a small channel and inserting it there and also on the leading edge too. That'll make the jet much stronger if you're gonna go really fast. But once that's dried and cool, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Put some glue in that channel, fold it down. I'm gonna take the tape and just put it over the glue joint. Cut off the excess pieces. Okay, once you're done with that, it's time to go ahead and open up all of our uh, scores here. This is for your control services and also punch the pieces out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, for this next step, we got something a little bit different. We have this kind of like uh, the scored outline right here on the plans. For this step, we're actually just gonna take a screwdriver or some little picking device and just kind of chisel out the foam. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The reason why I'm doing this is it's to have the paper on the other side. It just makes the airplane a little bit more cleaner. But if you guys want, you can just go and cut it straight out with a knife. It's not super necessary to dig all this out, but I just like it because it just looks a little bit better. So we're gonna do that for here. This is gonna be for a rudder assembly later on. And here's for the fuselage, kind of like intake duct tap things. Okay, it's also important to notice that you'll see these little etch marks here on the uh, kit. Uh, you don't need to do anything with these. These are for the, um, the missile hard points on the wings if you want to install them, but we're not gonna worry about them right now. So once we go and do this, we'll open that score up. Our next thing you do is go and do the bevel on this. And if you guys aren't familiar with that, it's where you take the knife like this and you cut a 45 degree or greater angle into it, making this piece have the ability to move down. Now, if you guys are uncomfortable using the knife, you can use a sanding bar. That's also covered in the uh, speed build kit, uh, how to build without knives. So that's a lot easier for those of you that find this next step kind of difficult. I just done this so many times, I'm just so used to it. <laughs> but I wanna, if I'm doing this with a knife, I'm gonna do it very slowly and take my time and cut very thoroughly. There's a lot of knife going on here too, and this is very sharp too, so be very, very careful. Go and do the same thing for the other side. You kind of see how I'm doing this. I'm doing it at a very, very great angle, like 60 degrees or more, giving the knife the ability to kind of slice through. Because you don't want to just kind of force the knife through. It doesn't work that way. You want to slice through the foam. You can also slice through your fingers too if you're not careful, so mind your fingers. And you should get these. I just like to go and just pre-roll them up just to make sure they flow nice and even. And they do. So the next thing to do to reinforce these is we're gonna do the hot glue uh, glue joint. So to do this, we just take a little bit of glue, put a very light bead down along the surface, grab a piece of scrap foam, and smear off 90% of the glue you just put down. This kind of pushes the glue into the cracks into the paper keeping it uh, stuck better and it doesn't delaminate as easy. 
once you've done that, you wanna make sure you just leave it alone, let it cool. You don't need to actuate the surface or anything right now. Just leave it alone. Go and do the same thing for the other side. Smear that glue down. And let it dry and completely cool. So the next step, we're gonna take the fuselage and our wing and we're gonna slip them together. So before we like to do this, I just kind of take my finger and kind of crush this down a little bit. These make, these make these tabs fold inward a little bit so it's easier to assemble to the fuselage. Just gonna pinch them down a little bit. Now we're gonna take our fuselage, and this part's a little bit tricky. We're gonna just insert one, at, one end in first. So just gonna lock that in. Make sure both tabs are down like that. And now we're gonna go and take this part right here and kind of roll the fuselage up like that. You can see how it's kind of twisted like that. And we're gonna slip that in like that. And we'll just kind of lock into place. And you should get something that looks like this. Once you got the fuselage piece in, it's time to run some glue in there. To do this, you just go and run it along the side. Go ahead and get the top and bottom. And while this is kind of like floating around like this, it's important to hold this as straight as possible and keep that angle nice and crisp. Go ahead and let it cool completely dry. And then you're done with this step. So to continue on to the fuselage assembly pieces, we're gonna go and assemble our rudder slash intake thing thingamajiggers. So to do this, I'm just gonna fold this in a little bit. You kind of see where the score is right here. That's where we fold. Now, if you look closely, you'll see they're kind of folding like that. So you have a left and a right hand. So to get these pieces in, this is how I do it. I take this like this, fold that up over, and slide it in like that. This is how you do it without creasing these surfaces or anything. Once it's in there, you just kind of roll this in with your finger, and it pops up like that. Come down here, and where this tap is, and just press it down. And that's all you do for this. Now, it's important that you do not glue this right now. We have to set the angles of these stabilizers because these get canted in just a little bit later on. So we're just gonna let that sit in for now. Do the same thing with the other side. and press them down. So once you're done with this piece, it's time to go ahead and assemble our lower duct part right here. So we have the same thing kind of going on here. We got this cavity that needs to be dug out and then we just got the normal side pieces. So I'm gonna go and dig these out. All right, so once you're done digging out this piece, we're gonna need one more thing. It's gonna be this piece right here. This part is gonna bridge the gap between the fuselage and this uh, bottom plate thing. So as you can kind of see, there are differences here. There's a big tab and a small tab. The small tab's gonna go in this surface right here. We're gonna go and just trowel fit it. And that looks pretty good, fits right in. And now we're just gonna go glue it in. Go ahead and get something that's pretty uh, 90 degrees and just kind of check it up and make sure it's nice and square. Let it cool down and dry. So once it's done drying and stuff, we're gonna go take it and just go and trial fit it in the fuselage. Fits pretty nice in there. As you can see, now there's a gap here and a gap there. We're gonna go and close that in a second, but first we're gonna go and glue this, this piece down in there. So go and get your glue gun, glue that there. Some glue there. Stick this down in there. Now it's kind of hard to get a square or anything on this, but I find it's actually just pretty easy just to eyeball and look. So I'm just gonna go and hold it 
roughly about where center is. You can kind of even use the two side pieces for height adjustment and you can kind of see where it's gonna lie. So once you got it nice and centered, just hold it there and let it dry. Now we can start to glue these pieces in. But before we do this though, we're gonna have to glue this side and this side at the same time, just to set the right angles. If you guys wanna go ahead and just check this, you can kind of slip them under there, press them in, and then look at the back to look, look for what you're looking for. And this is basically what I'm trying to get. Kind of that middle part centered and it's kind of jigging up and holding those two stabilizers in at the right angles. Once you're kind of satisfied and ready to do this, just go ahead and flip it back over, pop these out, and put some glue on the center plate. We're gonna slip that out of the way, get some glue there. And go to glue, uh, put the glue on the other side as well. Once you've done that, fold these back in. And then go ahead and look from behind, check for a straightness. Now the next thing to do is we now start to glue these side pieces in right here. So to do this, I simply just go and pull this up just a little bit and put a bead of glue inside that crack. Push that thing back down into that tab and just gonna hold it and just let it dry. The only tricky part you're gonna find is this part is gonna to try to kind of fold out from that. So you can just put some glue in there and just kind of hold it in, just wait for it to completely cool down and cure. So once you're done with this side, we're gonna go and do the same thing to the other side. Now, if you have a little excess glue that comes out the crack and you just don't want to see it, go ahead and take a piece of scrap from and just scrape it out. So once you're done with the bottom, go ahead and do the same thing with the rudders. You can just kind of like lift them up just a little bit, or you can just kind of leave them down in that crack. I just find it's easier to leave them down in there. And put some glue in there. Do the same thing for the other side. And let these cool down and dry. We're finished with the fuselage now and the entire airframe too. Now this is the bare minimum for the required steps of the airplane. You can fly it as a three channel without any additional features, but since this is the build video, I'm gonna go ahead and install all the extras and upgrades that are completely optional. So we're gonna get started with that now. So this next part, we're gonna get the rudder assembly. This is kind of like a rudder tab. And if you guys are wondering like why I didn't actually install rudders in this airplane, I actually did try the rudders, but they didn't really fly very good. They induced a lot of like weird rolling tendencies, but I found this rudder tab on the bottom to be much easier to install and much easier to, to use and flies better. So same thing here, just gonna open up the score, fold it over and bevel it. Do a little bit of the uh, hot glue reinforcement thingy majigger. Put that there and scrape that glue out. Next thing to do is punch out this little pocket right here. This is for the servo. Now once this is cool, you're gonna go ahead and actuate the surface a little bit just to make sure it flows nice and easy. So just gonna wiggle back and forth a couple times. And it's time to install it in the airplane. So to do this, I like to crush this just a little bit. This makes the piece going easier. And go ahead and put some glue here, here, and here. Now go over to your fuselage and just kinda of slide down in there. Go ahead and grab something that's about 90 degrees. And make sure that's nice and straight. So once the rudder tab installation is done, you can choose to install the missile rails. Uh, these guys are, aren't super necessary. I just kind of like them because they look kind of cool and they also kind of help the plane uh, high alpha better. So that means flying at high angles of attack, they kind of help the airflow move over the surface a little bit straighter. So the first thing you notice, there's two different sizes and that's kind of representative of where they go. The larger one is inside and the smaller ones on the outside. So these are where these little alignment pieces come into play. So just simply install these, just put some glue here and stick it down. Go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. And 
and going to repeat the process for the other side. So that pretty much wraps up all the additional assembly pieces as far as these guys go. Now we can go and install all of our electronics. So now we're going to go and move on to our power pod installation, our servo installation, and our battery and receiver. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install our power pod and our motor and ESC. Now this jet is going to use the 2204-2300 kV motor that we carry from Emacs. However, you can use any motor roughly about the size. And also, it has the option of using normal firewalls too if you want to use different motors and try other things out. They will, this will fit too. But this requires a little bit more of a, a normal installation where you just kind of glue this into the airplane. But we're not going to worry about this. So to install the power pod, you're going to notice that the fuselage is a little bit too small and this won't fit. That's why you have this piece right here. This is a little spacer. We're going to go and cut this out and fold it up. Now this is a B-fold, which is different from the A-fold in the power pod in the power pod build. So the B-fold is once again is beside, so you just fold it up like that. Gonna put some glue in there. And some glue there. Fold that up. Now if you guys are wondering about the glue that oozes out the side to uh, fix this problem, you can scrape off the glue later on, but for now we're just gonna move it off where the glue bob is on the table. This keeps it apart from sticking to the table while you're assembling things. Go ahead and make sure this is nice and square. And then you're done with that. So to go and install this piece, we're gonna grab our fuselage. We're gonna go and just go and see how it fits in there. Fits pretty good. Go and line it up with the rear and just go ahead and glue it down in. So to do this, I just put glue on the bottom. and press it down in there. I don't worry about the side plates because this is a very snug fit, so the power pod will just push these to the side and hold everything nice and nice and true. All right, so now we're gonna install the power pod. And if you guys haven't built one of these before, go ahead and check out the link below to see how to build these things. Now for this, you can kind of move the power pod up and down because some of you guys will have different length can motors. So you can move the motor pod assembly inwards or further out, if, depending on where you want it. But right, about right here is where I prefer with this specific motor. And to lock it down, we're gonna grab, grab a barbecue skewer and just slide it on in. Since uh, you guys will, be, will probably be using different motors and stuff, I left the, there's no hole here. So there's many methods you can use to glue this in or skewer it in. If you're gonna glue it, you can simply just put some glue on the corner and just glue it in and you're done. But to keep it removable, I'm just gonna go ahead and go in with the skewer on the side. Poke it through. Slide to that side. Come around this side. I went through a little bit crooked, so it probably helps to take your time with this. I'm just being sloppy. Now grab your cutters and just cut off the excess. Ow! Now you're done with the assembly for that. For the next step, we're gonna go install all of our servos. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our Elvon servos, which are on top. And if you guys are doing just the three-channel version, this is all you have to do. But you're gonna notice that these are actually kind of mirrored. You kind of see a left and a right hand, but this is actually gonna be my right and my left. Because you can see this part faces inwards towards this. Put a little glue block down there to lock them down. And do the same thing for their side. For the next step, we're gonna start our control horns. So to do this, I'm gonna take this and just gonna press into the slot. Just gonna trial fit it, take it back out, put a bead of glue in there, and lock it back down. Go ahead and do the same thing for their side. For the next step, it's time to install our push rod. So I like to take this end with the Z-bend and slide it into the servo horn. Slide it back out here. Now it's important to kind of hold your surface down so where it's completely parallel to the wing. Cause that, cause if you have this thing up, it'll change where we're gonna cut here. So I'm gonna hold it parallel to the wing. 
grab our diagonal cutters or dremel tool or whatever you choose to cut the wire with and snip the excess off. I leave about half an inch overhang in case I get my measurements wrong and cut that. Do the same thing for the other side. Cut that. Now we can just back the screw out on our control horns. This is a, this is a servo keeper. You guys are wondering what these are. We sell these in the store too. Do the same thing for the other side. Now I like to go ahead and snug these down pretty well. You don't have to fully tighten these right now. We're gonna make our final adjustments when we plug our radio in and get the servos completely centered. And this is the rudder part for those of you guys that are installing the rudder tab. All right, for the rudder assembly, we're gonna go ahead and slide the servo in on this side. You kinda of see it's right here. So it's going in through this side because the your hinges on this line. You can do on the other side too, but I like it better with all my stuff on this, this face of the control surface. Put a little drop of glue on the other side to lock it down. If you guys are gonna install the third servo for the rudder control, it's advised that you go with the bigger ESC slash BEC, mainly because this is running up against the limits and if you do fly too aggressively using the smaller 12 amp uh, ESC, chances are you might run into a brownout. So definitely look into upgrading your ESC slash BEC if you're gonna use the third servo for the rudder control. Next thing to do is install the push rod, same thing as the top. Once you got that in there, Go and do the same things at the top. As far as the overhang, just a little bit extra. And snip it off. Go ahead and snug it back down and leave it alone. Last thing to do is go and route these cables. Now, since you guys are probably gonna be using different servos and stuff, I have to warn you too as well. Uh, these 3.7 gram servos work really, really good with this jet, with this power system. But if you guys wanna use bigger motors and stuff, you need to increase the whole size to accommodate bigger servos, such as the nine grams or even larger, depending on how fast you wanna go. Cause these guys are kind of at their limits with this specific setup. And also they're a little bit short, so we're gonna need to get some extensions for this. You're gonna need a total of three extensions, preferably six inches, but we have the longer ones that come in our kits and they will work as well. All right, for the next step with the short extensions, we don't have enough to get fully in there. So I wanna get some of my uh, six inch extensions, plug them all in. So while plugging these in, you wanna make sure you get them in correctly. Like if you look, uh, there's a yellow wire here and a yellow wire there, sometimes it's white, but you wanna make sure they all match. So red to red, black to black, white to white, or yellow to yellow. You don't wanna get these things backwards and you can plug them in backwards too. If you plug them backwards, they just don't work, but you're gonna have a fun time diagnosing why your plane doesn't work. All right, so once those are all buttoned up, I'm gonna take these and slide them through the holes on the airplane. You can kind of see the hole down there that uh, you saw earlier. You're gonna just try to slide them through there. Sometimes it helps to get something like a little, a little pusher, sticker, whatever, kind of push this guy in there. There we go. Do the same thing for the other two on the other side. Turn it back over. Pull the wires through. Now we're gonna start buttoning down our wires. So to do this, I kinda come over to this side, grab some tape, place a piece there. Kinda like pull this taunt so this is like not too much slack there. And press this down real nice and clean. I have to go ahead and tape it all through this entire slot and a little bit extra too because uh, since the prop is operating in pretty close proximity to this, you really don't want to get these things sliced or have the wires somehow come out and get the propeller. Because if you cut this, you're going to be in bad shape. And you're going to have a very bad time. Do the same thing for the other side. For the rudder wire, I like to route it like this. Add a piece of tape there. and press it down. Go ahead and push those wires to the side there again. Once you're done with that, you can kind of clean up this last bit of assembly by pulling the rest of these two as far as they can go. All right, once you got the excess kind of pulled up on this side, you can just take it down 
and do the same thing for the other side. And then you're complete with that. For this step, we're gonna install our radio now. And now, uh, this plane does use Elvon mixing, and if you guys are curious about that or wonder what that is, we actually have a, a, a video on Elvon mixing and showing you how it works and all that stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and assume you guys kinda know what that is already, and I'm gonna uh, work you through the install. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in our ESC line. Since this is a Grapner radio, it defaults on like JR spectrum, and that basically means one is throttle. So I'm gonna plug this in down there. Two and three are aileron and elevator. So since uh, aileron mixing is a combination of ailerons and elevator, I'm gonna look for my aileron and elevator leads, which are basically these two servos right here. Now, if you guys uh, paid attention, that you'll notice that these two are the exact length away from each other, but the rudder servo horn or servo wire is a lot longer away. That's why we have two of them right here with the two ends stopping right there and the short one here. So this part doesn't really matter so much which way you stick it in right now, because we're gonna need to figure out our control scheme in a second. So just plug one into two, and one into three. Or it runs an elevator if you're using different receivers. Last thing you do is install the rudder channel, which is a four. And that's gonna go right there. For this next step, where the plane's all plugged in and bound up to your radio of choice, I'm gonna bring this guy in. Since the servos are centered, I can see if they move. Yep, they move just fine. All my trims are at zero. Gotta make sure they are. And now I'm gonna take these surfaces, move them as straight as possible. It doesn't hurt to grab something straight and lay it on the surface, like this thing in particular. Lay that down there, then lock this down. Turn it there, and really crank it down too. Make sure it's nice and tight. Because if this part comes off during flight, you're kind of out of luck and you're probably gonna crash. Same thing for the other side. Go and do the same thing for the rudder tab. All right, for the bottom, I wanna make sure the rudder works. Yep, it's working. It looks pretty centered, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just tighten it back down. I'll make a little entrance hole through the side. Wrong entrance hole, gotta redo. <laughs> Down, pull that out. Now I'm gonna flip this back over. And now it's time to verify that our Elvons are working in the right way. So for Elvons to work, basically what they need to do is both these services need to go up to make the plane pitch up since they're behind the center of gravity. So these go up, that's correct. To roll, this side needs to come up and that side needs to go down and it is going the right way for a uh, right roll command. So if you think about it, the airflow hits the surface and pushes this wing down, airflow hits the surface and pushes that wing up, and that makes it, makes it roll to the right. And for the opposite, to go to the left, same thing. So left, right, up, and down. Now what the last thing you do is to check the rudder orientation, make sure that's working the right way. Left and right. So that's going the right way too. Pretty lucky. Notice the time I have to do some channel reversing and stuff. So if you guys don't have this working the right way, definitely check out the Elevon tip episode on how to change your channels around and how to reverse it because you cannot fly if these are moving in the wrong direction. The plane will probably crash. Or you guys become a real expert at flying weird controls on airplanes. Last thing to do is go and button everything down. I'm gonna take a little drop of glue. Glue my receiver in. I'm gonna glue my speed controller in. I'm gonna glue this as far forward as possible. And also, if you guys are gonna fly this thing around like really 3D and you're gonna use a lot of amp draw, I recommend getting a bigger ESC than we carry. This is the 12 amp right now from the BL Heli one. This, this one's running pretty close to its limits, but I've found it's generally okay. But if I grab one of these controversies, I can stall the servos out and then stall the BEC out and then probably usher in a crash. So get a bigger ESC if you wanna use bigger servos or go really crazy with your flight characteristics. <laughs> Glue there. Glue that down. Last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna mount my antenna. I'm just gonna mount the top of this. It only has one antenna though, but for most of you guys with two receivers, you usually want them mounted 90 degrees apart from each other. So one would go this way, 
Neither item will go that way or that way or some variation of the two. But since this is only a single antenna one, I'm just not gonna worry about that. Glue that there. And now it's time to fold this down. Now you guys can either glue this hatch in if you don't wanna service the airplane, or if you guys feel like, you know, just cut it off when you're done, you can just tape it as well. I'm just gonna go tape it because I might want access back in here later on. I got some tape. Lay it over the top. Fold it down. Do the same thing back here. The last thing you do is our battery. So for this, I like to like leave these side plates like this. I didn't really put anything in there in case you guys wanted to use bigger batteries or just do something different. So I left these faces like this so you can actually just fold them out if you want. But I'm gonna grab a piece of Velcro and stick it to one side of this half and then stick the battery down. So for the Velcro installation, I'm just gonna stick it to one side and stick the battery up in there like that. Now the canopy just kind of just slips on. I actually just prefer it like that. Since I'm flying and the wind's blowing it this way, it's not really ever gonna come off. But if you guys uh, wanna make sure it doesn't come off, you can take a skewer, stick it to the side, or just a little piece of tape on the sides will hold it down just, just as well. The last thing we're gonna do, since our plane is now good and everything's uh, working great, is we're gonna check our propeller rotation. So this propeller, since it's a pusher, it needs to rotate this way, top to the right. Now this is a standard rotation propeller. If you guys have 605, 6045R or whatever propeller combination you have, it'll probably rotate the other way. But for our standard power packs and our standard rotation propellers, it needs to go this way. So I'll check that by spinning the motor. I can kind of see right now, it's actually moving to the left. That's the wrong way. So I need to switch the two wires around and then bolt the prop back on. So I'll go and do that right now. So I made the mistake of already taping this thing down. Luckily I did not glue it. I'm just gonna slice this open. And to switch these two wires, you have your three uh, wires right here to your brushless motor and your speed controller. To switch any two of them. Doesn't matter the combination, you just need to switch two around. And then check for rotation. Now it's being the right way. Okay, now it's time for the prop assembly. Now that we've confirmed this rotates the right way, you're gonna need to find your propeller. And also sometimes they come with little packets of little, little discs right here. These are actually spacers. You need to find the right one that fits on the motor shaft depending on if your propeller fits fits on there or not. This one does not fit. It is too big and it will not sit on the center and that will be a problem if you try to tighten this down. It'll vibrate a lot and not fly very good. So to fix this, we find the right spacer, slide it in the propeller hole, and slip this on. Grab your prop nut and just tighten it down. All right, for this last step, we're gonna move on to the CG and control throws. For this plane, there is a throw gauge included in the kit. To use this thing, we simply just pull up on the control surface, line up to the bottom of the wing, and I kind of see where it lies. For this plane, uh, 16 degrees is actually on the low side for this, but for this thing, I really don't even fly with a throw gauge at all. I just use whatever throws I get out of here. Chances are, if you guys are kind of like inexperienced, you probably wanna tone down a little bit. 16 would be better on your low, and it's good to have high too, because this plane is actually kind of a, it's really easy to fly around. It's really not that difficult at all, even with maximum throw deflections and all that. So you guys will probably have a pretty comfortable experience. Uh, I definitely run Expo though. Run about probably 30% Expo for those of you with really jittery fingers. And now onto the center of gravity. This plane is actually kind of unique in the way it performs. Right now the CG with the battery in the nose is about right here. This is actually really good for really good support intermediate performance like uh, you want to do a lot of high alphaing and stuff, it does really good right here. Now if you want to do a lot of crazy pitch changes and stuff and lots of looping, you can even move the CGs far back as to where the motor is. I find that you can, it can still even fly in this position. It gets really hard to control and a little unstable, but relatively flies well. But for now we're going to fly with the center of gravity right about right here. Okay, so now we're all done with the setups and stuff. We're outside. The wind is blowing over the place. It's really cold, but we're gonna fly it anyways. So just to reiterate, the CG is at its furthest point forward, which is about right 
uh, right about here, which is about uh, two inches away from the leading edge. And that's for very uh, docile advanced flying or easy flying. But we're going to uh, roll on with that. So to launch it, I had to hold it by the nose, apply some power and just let go. You see, it's moderately fast. It's probably good at like uh, 30, 40 mile an hour airplane with this setup. Rolls over just fine. It's very windy today, actually. Slow seat performance is pretty good. Invert is very easy with this jet too. You just simply roll it over and just push a little bit negative. Holds it just fine. One thing you'll find though, it doesn't really knife edge though. No, so no knife edging with this jet. Landing some breeze, so simply just pull back and reduce power and you're done. <laughs> The Jet's a very good, strong intermediate flyer. You guys will have tons of fun with this thing. Uh, the only thing I can really say though is maybe get a larger speed controller if you guys are gonna fly full power. Cause I tend to fly full power more than I think. And with this speed controller, you can run it up to its limits, especially running with three servos. Two servos will be just fine. The Jet's on the store right now. Uh, check out the store for the power pack and all the other stuff. And if you guys want, the free plans are now available too. So go and download those and cut one out. And I'll see you guys next time.